The Honorable Member for Langley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honored today to rise to speak to C-44, the Protection of Canada from Terrorism Act. It's important to begin this debate by acknowledging that all activities of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service are conducted in accordance with Canadian law. CISA's activity are also subject to full and complete review by the Security and Intelligence Review Committee, CISA's dedicated review body. This seems to be something that my colleagues opposite it are quite concerned about. They seem to think that we are in the movies where spies wantonly disregard our laws in order to put a stop to whatever threat may exist. While our security agents agencies do phenomenal work every day to keep us safe. It's not the content of a James Bond movie. Employees of CSIS follow the law, and that has constantly been found by the oversight bodies. Let me put it quite simply for my friends across the way. This bill will not change any of the robust review mechanisms that are currently in place. CSIS will continue to be subject to review and require judicial authorization for certain intrusive activities. CSIS will also continue to be accountable to its minister and to this parliament. Mr. Speaker, I say accountable to parliament very deliberately. The director of CSIS and the commissioner of the RCMP and the minister of public safety very recently appeared before a parliamentary committee for a frank and open discussion about the terrorist threat to Canada. While some may call for these roles to be formalized and more bureaucracy to be created, we will continue to live by the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This bill will clarify elements of CSIS mandate and address serious operational gaps, particularly for CSIS international activities by confirming its authority to operate abroad clarifying that the court can, use, can issue warrants for CISA's international activities in consideration of relevant Canadian law, prohibiting the disclosure of the identity of the CISA's human sources with narrow exceptions, and finally, protecting the identity of the CISA's employees who are likely engaged in covert activities. These amendments to the CISA's Act are vital to address threats to the security of Canada. For the sake of debate, I'll focus my remarks on the aspect of this bill which prohibit the disclosure of the CSIS human so uh, sources. But first, Mr. Speaker, I'd, I'd like to provide some historical and organizational content to this debate. Like our allies, intelligence is collected in Canada through a range of sources, open source research, signals intelligence, foreign reporting, authorized intercepts, and, importantly for us here today, human sources. Human intelligence includes, but is not limited to, information provided to CSIS by individuals acting covertly and in confidence as human sources. All forms of intelligence collected are vital to Canada's national security interests, and CSIS has its own distinct mandate and corresponding review and authorization regimes that reflect the nature of its investigative activities. CSIS mandate is very, very clearly defined in law. The CSIS Act authorizes it to collect and analyze intelligence to the extent that is strictly necessary and provide advice on threats to the security of Canada. CSIS must be able to conduct investigations within and without outside of Canada in order to fulfill that mandate. CSIS's role in Canada's national security community is to investigate threat-related activity and to advise the Government of Canada partners so that decisions may be, be taken on the basis of all information available. This role is specifically provided for by Parliament. In this matter, CSIS intelligence, which by its very nature must remain secret, may inform decisions related to entry into Canada, immigration status, government security clearances, aviation security, and criminal investigations, just to name a few. 
CSIS human source based intelligence collection is a fundamental component of its investigations. One could question whether CSIS would even continue to be an intelligence agency without information from its human sources. CSIS human sources regularly provide CSIS with valuable information on threats to national security. And like any modern intelligence agency, the identities of the CSIS human sources are closely guarded secrets to protect the ongoing access to relevant information and most importantly, to protect their personal safety. When these sources share information with CSIS, they often do at great risk to both themselves and their families and do so out of the desire to keep Canada safe. These individuals should be lauded for their sense of duty to Canada and our way of life. I challenge members in this House to imagine what would befall these persons divulging information on the activities of such nefarious individuals should they be found out. Undoubtedly, such individuals would be viewed as traitors for sharing information with CSIS. Needless to say, the physical safety of the CSIS sources is at risk should their status as an informant become known. To ensure the safety and security of the CSIS human sources, it's essential that their identities remain confidential and that the government be able to provide a degree of certainty to, to secure their cooperation. Mr. Speaker, in that regard, the Supreme Court recently ruled that CSIS human sources do not benefit from a class privilege like police informants. This means that there is a currently no guarantee that a human source's identity will be protected from disclosure in legal proceedings, and therefore the need for the change. At the same time, the court acknowledged that the practice of putting CSIS sources before the courts, even in closed proceedings, could have a chilling effect on the willingness of citizens to come forward. Mr. Speaker, failing to protect the identity of CSIS human sources could undermine existing human source operations, weakening the very foundation of CSIS investigative tradecraft. And that's why I support adding human source protection amendments to the CSIS Act, and I hope others do too. Without clarity on such member measures, CSIS risks seeing its sources compromised, together with the investigations connected to them. Mr. Speaker, we should be clear, however, that the proposed amendments were drafted to comply with the principles of fundamental justice and, as such, provide for narrow exceptions for, for this prohibition. At the order of a judge, the identity of a human source could be disclosed if that information is critical to prove the innocence of the accused at the criminal trial or where the judge determined that the individual was not a human source or the information could not be revealed through a source's identity. And that creates that balance that we uh, are concerned about. While such provisions would likely be used infrequently, they balance the need for human source identity protection and the right of the accused to a fair trial. Modern intelligence collection draws on a variety of sources, including open source research, interviews, information from domestic and international partners, and warranted intercepts. But the voluntary and confidential reporting of human sources remains the cornerstone of CSIS investigations. The complex terrorist threat that Canada faces, including events abroad and those here at home, demands careful consideration of all tools at our government's, at our government's disposal to protect the safety and security of Canadians and our way of life. Protecting the identities of individuals who put their lives in jeopardy to assist our security intelligence agency in this effort is an important and very important element in this response. And that's why I call on all honourable members to support the important legislation of C44 before us today. Thank you.